happy Memorial Day. Just because it's Memorial Day does not mean I'm going to skip chapter one of our next book, Midnight on the Moon. And it is our eighth book in the Magic Tree House series. And here we go. I believe this one, again, will have a prologue. It does. A prologue. One summer day in Frog Creek, Pennsylvania, a mysterious tree house appeared in the woods. Eight-year-old Jack and his seven-year-old sister Annie climbed into the treehouse. The treehouse was filled with books. And it was magic. It could go any place that was in a book. All Jack and Annie had to do was point to a picture and wish to go there. They visited dinosaurs, knights, an Egyptian queen, pirates, ninjas, and the Amazon rainforest. Along the way, they discovered the treehouse belonged to Morgan Le Fay. Morgan was a magical librarian from the time of the King Arthur. She traveled through time and space, gathering books for her library. One day, Jack and Annie found a note that said Morgan was under a spell. Jack and Annie set out in the magic treehouse to find four special things that would free her. With the help of the mouse named Peanut, Jack and Annie found the first thing in Old Japan, the second in the Amazon rainforest, and the third in the Ice Age. Now Jack and Annie, now Jack, Annie, and Peanut are ready to find the last thing in Midnight on the Moon. Chapter 1 By Moonlight Jack, whispered a voice. Jack opened his eyes. He saw a figure in the moonlight. Wake up, to get dressed. It was his sister Annie. Jack turned on his lamp. He rubbed his eyes. Jack was standing, sorry, Annie was standing beside his bed. She wore jeans and a sweatshirt. Let's go to the tree house, she said. What time is it? asked Jack. He put on his glasses. Don't look at the clock, don't look at your clock, said Annie. Jack looked at the clock. Oh man, he said, it's midnight, it's too dark. No, it isn't. The moon makes it bright enough to see, said Annie. Wait until morning, said Jack. No, now, said Annie. We have to find the fourth M thing. I have a feeling that a full moon might help us. That's nuts, said Jack. I want to sleep. You can sleep when we come back home, said Annie. No time will have passed, Jack sighed. Oh, brother, he said. But he got out of bed. Yay, whispered Annie. Meet you at the back door. She tiptoed out of Jack's room. Jack yawned. He pulled on his jeans and sneakers and a sweatshirt. He put his notebook and pencil in his backpack. Then he crept down the stairs. Annie opened the back door quietly. They stepped outside. Wait, said Jack. We need a flashlight. No, we don't. I told you the moonlight will light our way, said Annie, and she took off. Jack sighed, then followed her. Annie was right, though, Jack thought Jack. The moon was so bright. Sorry. I thought I had set that alarm. The moon will light her way, said Annie, and she took off. Jack sighed, then followed her. Annie was right, though, thought Jack. The moon was so bright that he could see his shadow. Everything seemed washed with silver. Soon, they left their street. Annie led the way to frog, the Frog Creek Woods. It was much darker under the shadow of the trees. Jack looked up, searching for the treehouse. There, said Annie. The magic treehouse was shining in the moonlight. Annie grabbed the rope ladder and started climbing up. Careful, go slowly, said Jack. He followed her up the ladder into, into the treehouse. Moonlight streamed through the windows. Sorry, moonlight streamed through the windows. It shone on the letter M that shimmered on the wooden floor. It shone on the three M things that rested on the M. A moonstone from the time of the ninjas, a mango from the time of the Amazon rainforest, and a mammoth bone from the Ice Age. We need to get one more M thing, said Annie, to free Morgan from her spell. Squeak, peanut, she said. Oh, sorry, said Annie. In the dim light, Jack saw a tiny mouse. She sat on an open door. Oh, sorry, she sat on an open book. 
You didn't expect to see us this late, did you, said Annie. She picked up Peanut, and Jack picked up the open book. So where are we going this time, Annie asked. Jack held up the book in the moonlight. Uh-oh, he said. I knew we should have brought a flashlight. I can't read a thing. He could make out diagrams in a shadowy picture, but he couldn't read a word. Look at the cover, said Annie. The letters were bigger on the cover. Jack squinted at them. It's called... Hello, Moon, he said. Annie gasped. We're going to the moon! Of course not, said Jack. It's impossible to go to the moon without tons of equipment. Why? There's no air. We can't breathe. Not only that, we'd boil to death if it was day, day and freeze to death if it was night. Yikes, said Annie. So where do you think we're going? Maybe a place where people train like astronauts, said Jack. That sounds neat, said Annie. Yeah, said Jack. He'd always wanted to meet astronauts and space scientists. So say the wish, said Annie. Jack opened the book again. He pointed to the picture of the dome-shaped structure. I wish we could go there, he said. The wind started to blow. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster and faster. Absolutely silent. As quiet and still as silence could be. Chapter 2 Space Motel. Jack opened his eyes. He looked out the window. The treehouse had landed inside a large white room. What kind of training place is this? asked Annie. I don't know, said Jack. The room was round. It had no windows. It had white floors and a curved wall lit by bright light. Hello? Annie called. There was no answer. Where were all the astronauts and space scientists? Jack wondered. There's nobody here, said Annie. How do you know, said Jack. I just feel it, said Annie. We'd better find out where we are, said Jack. He looked at the page in the moon book. He read the words below the, pic the picture of the dome. A moon base was built on the moon in 19, sorry, in the year 2031. The top of the dome slides open to let spacecrafts enter and leave. Oh, man, whispered Jack. What's wrong, said Annie. Jack's heart pounded with excitement. He could hardly speak. We've landed inside a moon base, he said. So, said Annie. So, the moon base is on the moon, said Jack. Annie's eyes widened. We're on the moon? And Jack nodded. The book says the moon base was built in 2031, he said. So this book was written after that, which means the book is from the future. Oh, wow, said Annie. Morgan must have gone forward in time to borrow it from the future library. Right, said Jack. And now we're in the future on the moon. Squeak, squeak. Annie and Jack looked at Peanut. The mouse was running in circles. Poor Peanut, said Annie. She tried to pick up the mouse. But Peanut hid behind the mango on the letter M. Maybe she's nervous about being on the moon, said Jack, said Annie. She's not the only one, said Jack. We better, he said, <laughs> sorry about that. <sighs> He's not the only one. She's not the only one, said Jack. He let out a deep breath. Then he pushed his glasses into place. So what's a moon base, asked Annie. Jack looked at the book. He read aloud. When scientists visit the moon for short periods, they eat and sleep in the moon base. A space motel, said Annie. I guess, said Jack. He read more. The small base was a landing chamber in a room for storing spacesuits. Air and temperature controls make breathing possible. So that's why we can breathe, Jack said. Let's explore, said Annie. We have to find the fourth thing for Morgan. No, first we should study the map, said Jack. He pulled out his notebook. You study, said Annie. Jack copied the map, and then he drew in the treehouse. Okay, he said, and he pointed at the X in his drawing. We're here. Jack looked up. Annie was gone. Oh, brother, Jack said. As usual, he, she had left without him. 
before they could even make a plan. Jack put the moon book and pencil into his pack. Carrying his notebook and backpack, he started out the window. Squeak, squeak! Jack looked back at Peanut. Looked back at Peanut. The mouse was running back and forth on the end. Stay here and be safe, said Jack. We'll be back soon. Jack swung himself over the windowsill. His feet touched the floor of the landing chamber. Annie, he called. There was no answer. Jack looked at his diagram. It showed only one way to go. Jack walked along the curved white walls to the stairs. He climbed the steps into a hallway. Jack, hurry! Annie was at the end of the hallway, standing in the airlock. She peered out the window in a giant she peered out a window in a giant door. Jack hurried towards her. Annie stepped aside so he could look out the window too. Oh man, said Jack. What he saw took his breath away. He stared at the rocky gray land. The land was filled with giant craters and tall mountains. The sun was shining, but the sky was ink black. Say hi to the moon, Annie said softly. And that is the end of chapter two. We will have to find out more about their moon adventure tomorrow. I hope you are having a wonderful Memorial Day and getting outside in this beautiful weather. I know we're still doing our um, digital learning, but I think our summer weather is here, which is so exciting. I hope you have an excellent week, and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye.